Hello and welcome to our channel. In this video, we will focus on the ultra structure of the neuron and we will look at the general structure of the nerves, their layers of the connective tissues and finish by the considering some conditions that arise when the normal structure is lost. And the basic topics that we will cover in this video are First of all, we'll talk about the neuronal structure, then we'll talk about the classification of the neurons, that is structural classification and functional classification. Then next, thirdly, we will discuss about the different coverings of the neuron. And at last, we'll discuss about the homeopathic medicines which are used for the nerve pains. So these are some basic topics that we will cover in this video. So let's start. So first of all, we'll talk about the neuronal so let's talk about it now so as we all know that nervous system allow us to perceive understand and respond to our environment it comprises two different types of cells one is nerve cell that is neurons and second one is glial cells now let's talk about them so nerve cell that is neurons these form the functional basis of the nervous system and they are responsible for transmitting signals as electrical or the chemical signals then secondly glial cells these provide functional and the structural support for the neurons and one example is Chevron cells which produces the lipid sheet or peripheral neurons now let's talk about the neuron structure now or simply you can say a neuronal structure. So as you can see here on the screen we have provided a picture of the neuron structure. Now let's talk or simply the neuron structure. So there are several different types of neurons which are found in the nervous system and they all contain the same key structural components that is the cell body, the dendrites, the axon and the axon terminals. Now one by one, we'll talk about these key structural components. So first is, so as you can see here on the screen, cell body. The cell body holds the nucleus. It is a site of protein synthesis, as we all know that, which occurs on small granules of rough endoplasmic reticulum, and which is also called as nasal substance or nasal granules. In the nervous system, many neuronal, neuronal cells' bodies can group together to form a distinct structure. And in the central nervous system, this is known as nucleus. And in the peripheral nervous system, this is called as ganglion. Now, second key structure of neuron is the dendrites. So as you can see here on the screen, the dendrites are elongated portions of the cell body. They extend outwards, receiving input from the environment and from other neurons. Then third structure is axon. So as you can see here, axon is a long, thin structure down which action potential are conducted. Whilst neurons have many dendrites and most cells have only one axon. Now next structure, sorry. And each axon is coated in a myelin sheet, a layer of insulating lipid. And myelin is formed by the cell wrapping themselves around the nerve axons. And in the central nervous system, this is formed by oligodendrocyte cells. And in the peripheral nervous system, that is PNS, Chevron cells are responsible for this. There are gaps between the myelin sheet, which are formed by the different cells. And these gaps are known as node of the Ranvier's which allow for the solitary conduction of the impulses. Now next structure is axon terminals. So let's talk about it now. So the axon terminal is the most distal part of the axon. As you can see here on the screen, it is from here that the neurons set chemical signals to the other cells, usually by a neurotransmitters release, for example, dopamine. It is a type of neurotransmitter to facilitate the secretions of neurotransmitters. The axon terminals contain a large number of mitochondrions. So this was all about the key structures which are present in the neuron. And this is neuronal structure we have talked about. Now next we will talk about the broad classification of the neuronal structures. So basically here we, uh, here we have structure classification and functional classification. 
So neurons can be classified by structure or via functions. Neurons with different functions have different structures and which is visible histologically. So first of all, we'll talk about the structure classification of the neuronal structures. So as you can see here on the screen, we have provided a picture of structural classification. So they are divided into four types. First one is unipolar, second is pseudo unipolar, third is bipolar and fourth one is multipolar. Now one by one, we'll talk about them. So first of all, let's talk about so first of all, we'll talk about the unipolar uh, neuronal structure. So as you can see here on the screen, here the cell body is at one end of the single unbranched axon. And uh, as you can see here, there are no dendrites and these can be found in the cochlear nucleus of the brain. Now second type of structural classification of the neuron is pseudo unipolar neurons. So as you can see here on the screen, this is pseudo unipolar nu uh, neurons. So they have one axon which is divided into two branches by the presence of the cell body. Sensory neurons are all pseudo unipolar neurons. Now third type is bipolar. As you can see here on the screen, these neurons have two processes which are arising from the central cell body, typically one axon and one dendrite. And these cells are found in the retina of the human eye. Then last type is multipolar neuronal structures. So as you can see here on the screen, this is multipolar neuron. They have one axon and many dendrites. With the cell body displaced to one side of the axon. And motor neurons are a prime example of multipolar neurons. So this was all about the structural classification of the neuronal structures. Now next. Now next we'll talk about the functional classification of the neuronal structures. So let's talk about it now. So there are three broad classifications. Functional classification of the nerves that is sensory, intermediate and the motor. There are key structural differences between these three types. So first one is sensory nerves. So sensory nerves are small axons and pseudo unipolar structures. Then second is motor nerves. So they are large axons and multi and they have many dendrites. And sensory and the motor nerves are located within the PNS that is peripheral nervous system. Whereas intermediate nerves are found in the CNS that is central nervous system. So this was all about the functional classification of the neuronal structures. Now next we'll talk about the coverings of the neurons. So let's talk about. Uh, so let's talk about it now. So coverings. So in the peripheral nervous system that is PNS, the axons of the neuron are grouped together to form nerves. The axons are enclosed by several connective tissue layers. So first layer is endoneurium, second is perineurium and third one is epineurium. Now, le uh, now let us discuss about the three layers of the neuron in an elaborated manner. So first of all, we'll talk about what is endoneurium. So it surrounds the axon of an individual neuron. Secondly, second layer is perineurium. So it surrounds a fascicle, which is a collection of neurons. And third one is epineurium, which surrounds the entire nerve, which is formed by a collection of fascicles. It contains numerous small blood vessels which supplies the nerve fibers and epineurium appears on the nerve as it exits the intervertebral foramens. It is created by the fusion of arachinoid and the pia mater, which are the layers of the meninges. So these are the three layers of the neurons. So here we have talk about three layers of the uh, three coverings, you can say three coverings of the neuron. So this was all about the neuron, its classification and its covering. Now let's talk about the very important topic that is what are the homeopathic medicines, homeopathic medicine for the nerve pain that is five falls. Now we will discuss about this medicine which is used for the nerve pains. So now let us discuss about this now. So five falls tablet is a biochemical combination product which is prepared from the 5-phosphorus tissue shawls of 
Suzler's remedies including calcarea fos, ferrum fos, mag fos, natrum fos and califosporicum. These tissue shawls or the biochemic remedies are potentized forms of 12 essential minerals that our body needs to repair and maintain proper molecule balance. They are prepared enough to be used by all ages. They are prepared in homeopathic 6x potencies that are gentle enough to be used by all age groups. These salts play an important role in the cell metabolism by restoring the mineral balance in the body. And the 5 tissue salts inclusive of this biocombination are First one is Calcarea Phosphorica 6x. Now let's talk about it. So Calcarea Phos is useful during formation of the bones and the teeth. It is a remedy for the rickets. Secondly, second medicine is Calyphosphoricum 6x. It is a nerve tonic and is used in treating nervous headache, nervous dyspasia, sleeplessness, depression and low vitality. Third medicine is Natrum Phosphoricum 6x. It is an essential salt for digestive system which neutralizes increased level of acids and help in assimilation of the fats and other nutrients. Now next is Magnesium Phosphoricum or simply you can say Mag for 6x. It is an antispasmodic and analgesic. Next medicine is Ferrum Phosphoricum 6x. So uh, ferrum fos act as an oxygen carrier and help in strengthening blood vessels. So these are five phosphorus medicines which are used for making this five fos tissue salt or biocombination for the nerve pains. So this was all about the ingredients. Now let's talk about the uses so of five fos. So five fos is an excellent biochemic or by a combination remedy for nerve and the brain. It revitalizes and strengthens the body by promoting tissue building and through providing the necessary nutrients to, ne to nerves, brain and the bones. It acts as a tonic during chronic fasting diseases, anemia, general debility, exhaustion and lack of vitality. It is also useful in treating weakness in women due to blood loss, menstrual troubles and frequent childbearing. It is also a good remedy for neurasthenia, anxiety and impaired memory. So this was all about the benefits of FIFOS. Now let's talk about the doses and how to take it or how to use it. So in adults, take one or two tablets. In children, always take one tablet at a time, four times a day at an interval of three hours. Please note that the doses of single homeopathic medicines varies from drug to drug depending upon the condition, age, sensitivity and other things. We strongly recommend that the medication should be taken as per the physician's advice and it has no side effects. There are no side effects of FIFOs yet have been reported. So this was all about the FIFOs medicine which is used as a nerve tonic. That's all for today. See you guys in our next video. Till then stay connected with us for more videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below. And yes, press the bell icon for more updates. Stay safe and stay healthy. And yes, thanks for watching our video.